I will be going over the basics of React in this video. React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. It uses a concept called the virtual DOM that selectively renders sections based upon state changes and it's great for making single page apps. It is used by sites such as Facebook and Instagram. When you first start a project you have to make sure you include React in your project. CodePen makes it easy. If you're using CodePen, uh, you just click on the little gear icon here, and then under JavaScript, I already have um, React included. Um, it, you you want to include two things. If you don't have it included already, you're going to go to this quick add, and you're going to scroll down, and you're going to go to React right here, and then after you click here, you're going to open up the quick add again, and then you're going to click React DOM. You need both of those things, React and React DOM, and then you have to go to the JavaScript preprocessor, and you have to make sure uh, Babel is selected. This is going to allow you to use JSX. I'll tell you more about JSX later in the video. After you have it set up, you can start creating a React project. I have a simple page here that's been created in React. Um, before I go into the details of what's, what all this stuff is, I'm gonna, I want to show you that in the HTML section here, I just have one thing. It's a div with an ID of container. The CSS, I just have something to create a bigger font size for everything so it's easier to see on the screen. So let's go up over to the JavaScript. Um, the, the cool thing about React is that you can create a whole web page just basically in, in JavaScript. So this right here is a component. Your components tell React what you want to render. Uh, then React will efficiently update and render just the right components when your data changes. Usually your project will consist of many different components that, that go together. And then you have this line here, react-dom.render, where we're going to render our main component, which is shopping list. And um, we can pass in a prop. I'll tell you more about that later. And then you have th the next argument is where the, the component is going to render. We have document.getElementById container. So that's going to select this container up here in the HTML. And then it's going to render your React component. Here, shopping list is a React component class. Components take in parameters called props and return views to display. So the parameter that the shopping list is taking in is down here, name equals bow. It's going to take in this, so here's the name of the component, and here's the parameter we're going to pass in to the shopping list component. It's also going to return this view to display, so it's going to return all this stuff right here is the view that's going to display. This part uh, kind of looks like HTML, but it's actually called JSX. You don't have to use JSX, but it makes things much easier because it's so similar to writing HTML, which many people already know. JSX always has to be completely surrounded with one tag. What I mean is, see how it starts with a div tag and it ends with a div tag? If I tried to add another tag here, like a, a P tag or something, um, it's going to mess things up. Unless if I do add a P tag, I would have to um, start put another div tag at the beginning and then surround the whole thing with, with div. So I'd have to just add another div here. But we're going to um, delete all this stuff because we don't need it for this project. And it already starts with a div tag and ends with a div tag. Also, there are some differences between JSX and HTML. Instead of class, you're going to use class name, uh, mainly because class is a reserved word in JavaScript. There's a few other minor differences, but for the most part, you can write it pretty similar to HTML. Inside the JSX, you can put these curly braces, and inside those curly braces, you can have any valid JavaScript inside. Here we have a variable name, which is the prop that's passed in. So when I pass in this name, bow, I can access it just like this, this.props.name. Now I just realized that in this uh, display here, I still have something that, that's not actually in the code. So let me rerun this. Okay, so that's what it should look like now. The other part we are going to be adding later. So this right here is being displayed right here. We have shopping list for bow. And you can see it's displaying right over here, shopping list for bow. And then we have this list here and the list is being displayed right here on, on the web page. Now I'm going to add a little more to the code. In React you have different components and the components form a hierarchy. 
You usually build up components, making each additional component a child of the previous component. I'm going to take out these list items right here and create a list item component. We are just putting in a variable which is going to be all the list items. We're going to fill this variable with the list items in just a minute. But first I'm going to show how you create another component up here. So here is the, the list item component. So we have the shopping list component here, and then we have the list item component here that we're going to include in the shopping list component. I haven't finished showing exactly how to include it yet. This list item component is actually a simpler way to write components called a stateless functional component. This is for components that only have a render method. Rather than define a class extending react.component, you simply just write a function that takes props and returns what should be rendered. So it's going to take in props here and it's going to return what should be rendered, which just is just a list item. And then inside the list items, we have props.item. This is something we have to pass in to this component. Right now, both of these just render. See, we just have the render command here, we have the render command here, but I'm going to add more methods to the shopping list components later. This list item component only just renders the one item that's passed in. I'm going to create the list as a state in the shopping list component. So I just put in this code inside the shopping list component. This is to help create the state of the list. And then we're, we're going to pass each item of the list that we have stored as state in the shopping list component into the list item component and then that state becomes props. The key difference between props and state is that state is internal and controlled by the component itself while props are external and controlled by whatever renders the component. This will make more sense as I explain this example but state and props are key ideas in React. Anything inside this constructor function uh, is just run one time at the very beginning of, of the program. In JavaScript classes, you need to explicitly call super when defining the constructor of a subclass. And this is where you're going to define your state variables. The list state is owned by the shopping list component, and the state can only be updated by the shopping list component. We'll pass the items on the list as props to the list item component, but the list item component cannot make any changes to the items because they're owned by the shopping list component. Well, let me finish creating the code that will show you how this state actually ends up in the, the list item up here. So I'm going to go to this render method down here. Okay, let's look at this. We are going to create this variable. It's just an empty array called list items. And then we have this loop here. This dot state dot list. That's how we're getting this list here. This list here is this dot state dot list. And then we're going to do a for each loop for each item in this loop. We're going to use the item, which is unicycle, juggling clubs, and stilts. And this second thing is just the index of the items. We're going to do list items dot push. So we're pushing each of the list items onto this array. But now we're going to actually use some JSX here. So it's going to have this tag, the list item in the tag. And that list item is this list item. So we are going to pass in one of these list items components into the array. And inside the list item component, we are going to put in two props. So here's the first prop, item equals item. So there's going to be a prop called item, and that the value of that prop is item, and we get the item from here. And remember, inside JSX, you're going to use curly braces to put in JavaScript. So this, was, this is going to be each of the items on the list. And then we are going to pass in another prop called onClick. Now, you can pass in variables, but you can also pass in functions. So the onClick is going to pass in this onClick function, which we have not created yet. So we're going to pass in the variable, and we're going to pass onClick as a function. Now, before I create the onClick function, we're going to use the onClick function up here. Uh, so in the list items component, I'm just going to add this onClick equals props.onClick. 
Now we still don't know what that function is doing, so that's what I'm going to create now. We are going to create the onClick function in the shopping list component. So here's the onClick function. Now I'm passing in a function created in this component. So I'm putting in a list item component, but I'm passing in the onClick is going to equal a function in this component. So now the, the list item component can access the onClick function that's inside the shopping list component. So let's look at what the onClick function is going to be doing. We got var new list equals this.state.list.slice. So remember that this.state.list is this list here. Slice is just going to copy the list. And then we're going to do new list.splice index one. So we're passing in an index and it's passed in here. See when we when we pass in this prop on click, we're putting the index i that is coming from the for each loop. And this is just going to, when we do splice, it's just going to delete one item at that index. So this on click event is just to delete an item on the list. And then we're going to do this dot set state list is new list. So here's where we initialize the state and inside the state we have a list that's going to equal this list. But now we're going to create a new list that deletes the item that's clicked on and we're going to do this dot set state list is new list. So it's just a way to delete an item on a list by clicking it. By creating a copy of the list array instead of changing the original array, it increases component and overall application performance. Before React started using JavaScript classes, um, down here, you would not have to use the, the arrow function, but now you have to use an arrow function, so the word this will bind correctly. Uh, basically, without this arrow function here, the word this would be referring to the wrong thing, and you'll get an error. So now let's run this and just, just give it a test here. So if I click juggling clubs, oh, it deletes. If I click uni unicycle, it deletes. So see what that's, what's happening here? I'm going to run it again. If, whenever you rerun the project, it will start it from scratch. That's how I got these to reappear here. So let's just go over really quick what's happening. We have the constructor where we're going to create this list. Now we're going to push each item onto the list like this. So it's going to push a list item, which is basically just these li tags with the on click it's going to bring in the on click function from the shopping list component and for the item it's going to push in one item at a time from this for each array so w since there's three items in the list so unicycle juggling club and stilts there's going to be three um, list item components in this list items array then we're going to return all this stuff here including this array of list items. So we have the unordered list tag and then the list items is just all these list item tags get pushed into the array which ends up creating this list. And since we have this on click event, when we click it just automatically updates by removing the item. So the last thing I want to add is just a way to create the items without just restarting everything. Okay, I just added these two lines of code and I'm going to run this so it appears on the website here and we just have a text box and we have a button that says add. And you can see we have the ID of the text box is list item and in the button um, we have an on click event in the button and we've passed in, using these curly braces, we've passed in the this.addItem function. And again, uses the, the new arrow functions, but the key part is the this.addItem. This is a function within this component that we have not created yet. So right now, if I, right now I can put in here, I push add, and it doesn't really do anything. It's because we haven't, we haven't created this function yet. So let me create the addItem function. Okay, here we go. Here's the add item function. So let's go through what this does. So we have var item equals document dot get element by ID list item dot value. So remember when we create in the JSX or kind of HTML down here, we have this input item with the ID of list item. So when we do the get element by ID list item dot value, that's going to give us whatever's inside this text box here. 
Then we have document .get element by ID list item that value equals blank. So after we get the item that's in the text box, we want to change that text to an empty string. So uh, basically, after you click add item, the the word won't be in the text box anymore. That's what this line is for because we've already used that word. And then we're just like on the on click here, where we're going to um, slice the list to create a copy of it. We're going to create a new copy here um, is new list. And then we're going to push the item onto the new list, new list .push item. That's the item we got from the text box. And then just like the on click event, we're going to do this dot set state list is new list. Let me um, refresh this whole thing here and let's test it out. Um, if we add serial and then I click add, yep, see it went away from here and then it added to the list. And if I put juggling balls and then I click add, it's going to add to the list. And I can click the items to take them off the list. Oh, got serial, but now I want more serial. Let's add that again. When you call the this.set state, any component using list is automatically updated on the website. Now this list, this shopping list for Bow app, is just a pretty um, basic example of what you can do with React, but hopefully you see how powerful adding all these components can be to uh, create bigger and bigger apps. This was just a brief introduction, but I'm going to be doing more React videos in the future. Thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. You can check the description for the code from this video so you can try all this stuff out yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, use your code for good.